So in other MMOs, NPCs are completely static. So regardless of what peril they're telling you their village is in or what big threat is looming on the horizon, they're doing the same things over and over again. You're on a treadmill and you know that the same story is waiting for the next player who comes along. When you have events that are more complex than just a linear quest, usually um, they have huge scripts that control them. In EQ Next, you won't walk into an area and see a group of NPCs standing around with question marks over their heads. Uh, instead, you'll be guided to areas where events are taking place. There'll be NPCs gathering, building, fighting, and you as a player can jump into the action and guide it forward or push it in different directions to see what happens. And these events are happening all the time, all over Norath. You'll see that NPCs have their own lives, even when players aren't around, and they each act according to the roles assigned to them. So warriors behave differently from scouts or from priestesses. The scrying stone is a prop that my character can place in the world. When a priestess senses its presence, she uses it to scry just like the one that had been placed in the level by an artist or designer. When my character equips a special axe, you can see the NPCs start to follow me because it's been imbued with that behavior. When I equip the staff of the Thex Queen, the NPCs bow before me because the staff radiates authority. Items can be given to NPCs as well. When the High Priestess is given the Thex Queen staff, other NPCs bow before her, just as they did to my character. So your gateway to content in EverQuest Next is your copy of the magical tome, Rosong. It's a living beast sherry, an atlas, a quest journal that guides you through the world to places where interesting events are happening. It's a living record of your travels in EverQuest Next. So as you play, Rosong remembers your journeys, the choices you make along the way. It guides you, it serves as your constant companion through these journeys. Really, story is the backbone of everything that we're doing in EverQuest Next. So we take this world that's full of these, these races, these kingdoms, these organizations, and weave stories around them. We, we use lore as the backbone that drives these stories forward. What you're going to see is a design tool that we use to test these stories and test this system made of drives and, and uh, NPC groups, but also to simulate how players could uh, affect the world by their choices. So it's a very high level uh, AI demo uh, that is just used internally. You will never see this in the game and you have to understand that it runs at a much faster pace than uh, what you will actually experience as a player. Yeah, because these events will play out over days, weeks, perhaps even longer. So we want to be able to test it by compressing time. In this first scenario, a band of kobolds is moving into the Serpent Spine Mountains. The red color indicates that the kobolds have influence over an area. Players exploring this region will be fighting kobolds or escaping ambushes. The kobolds seek to control wealth by plundering the area's riches. As we run the simulation, we see that kobolds autonomously change the world around them, building outposts and acquiring wealth. In the second scenario, the Dark Elves need help building a mountain stronghold. NPC groups will seek out players to assist them in effecting change in the world. Their first goal is to take control of nearby resources, such as wealth and raw materials. When this goal is achieved, the Dark Elves ask for help getting rid of the kobolds. This shows how the drives of NPC groups evolve over time, which opens up new missions and objectives for players. Each scenario that we show you is to, to show a different aspect of uh, this. In the first one, we saw autonomous uh, behaviors. In the second one, we, we saw how drives could uh, generate player content. And in the third one, we, we show how conflicting drives can create uh, conflict between players. In the third scenario, the Dark Elves are after the nature essence of dryads in nearby Kithic or forest. Players choose a side in this conflict, gaining favor with either the Dryads or the Dark Elves, which opens up additional content options. Rosong remembers the actions you've taken and organizations you've chosen to help. The book will suggest places for you to go that match your faction standing or playstyle. If players sided with the Dark Elves, evil spirits awaken and begin to ravage the land. In EQ Next, your choices have consequences. Player actions can trigger rallying calls, which are gigantic, world-changing events. The Bloody Kithikor rallying call brings players together from across the server and will leave Kithikor permanently changed. Players on other servers might have made different choices and could see dramatically different consequences. Norath is a world that's brimming with stories, so there's things going on all over the place. So while the Dark Elves were engaged in this battle in Kithikor, uh, a sh lizardmen have discovered a temple to a faceless god in the Fira. The gnolls of Blackbur are massing for a war against Halas a shrine brimming with the energy of the Nori is being threatened in Jagged Pine. 
Troll clans are causing havoc in the swamps of Gukta, and there are tons of other mysteries opening up all over the world for players to explore. And we've only shown you five types of, of resources, dramatic resources, that uh, the NPC groups can care about, uh, but there are many more. And just imagine, we, we talked a little bit about religion, and there is a resource associated with this, and there are many more, uh, with many more stories that we can tell. So North is a world that's full of stories, and it's going to be your characters who determine how these stories unfold, and that's the content of our request next. Thanks a lot for watching. For our full presentation with even more detail on the content of EverQuest Next, click here.